Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the land geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And before we talk to today's guest, who I'm really excited about, I would be remiss if I did not mention my co host, Six Sigma, currently caffeine deprived, Scott Todd from Scott Todd. Net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you are not automating your Craigslist postings, why, why, why? Go to postingdomination.com forward slash land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm, I'm, I, and I have not had a lot of caffeine, by the way, today. Only four espresso shots this morning. So I'm due to more espresso shots. <laughs> See, you, you've had more caffeine than me today. I've, I've barely had any caffeine. I, I didn't get to make it out today for lunch. And that's where I get my big caffeine uh, shot. That and my afternoon break. And both of those were like Nick's today because I had some stuff going on. But uh, I feel it now. All right, okay, I'm going to raise your energy right away. Okay? All right. I'm going to close your eyes. Well, that's going to put me asleep. Hold on. Don't, don't, don't fall asleep. Close your eyes. I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine. Your best friend from college, yeah, ringing the doorbell right now and be like, Scott, let's go out anywhere except Panera Bread. Let's go party, my man. <laughs> How do you feel now? You're energized. You're ready. You're like, yes, let's go. I'm like the dog who's, who's all excited because they haven't seen their owner all day long, right? Exactly. <laughs> so excited. All right. Well, before we introduce today, uh, guys, it was like, I can't believe I'm on this spot. <laughs> yeah, it, it, he's, he's thinking twice about this. Uh, I am calling my agent for sure, and uh, he's fired. God. Wow, you actually have an agent? <laughs> that's, that's no, no, I don't. He's fired. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Mark, Mark, you and I, I think we need an agent, man. I know. We we'll, we'll, take, we'll take Wes's agent. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, obviously, he'll pick up two clients from Wes's one. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, I do want to remind everybody that LoanGeek.io is ready and able to automate you getting paid. ACA, credit card, a full back-end accounting system. Don't spend your Sundays like I used to, manually putting in your payments, contacting the people that are late on their payment. Automate it. All right? There's no geekier way to getting paid than LoanGeek.io. All right, let's talk about today's guests. And you know what? Getting paid is not geeky at all. So it's not. It's I'm just not, saying. Let's talk about shh, shh, the sales whisperer. Hey, I whisper. I'm the only one that can whisper. The saleswhisperer.com. Wes Schaefer, <laughs> ruthlessly pragmatic sales trainer. I don't even know what that means. Ruthlessly pragmatic. Ruthless. Marketing consultant, keynote speaker, copywriter, infusion expert, a doer. Nothing happens until a sale is made. A sale cannot be made until a prospect has been identified. A prospect cannot be identified until a business owner informs the marketplace that they are in business with a valuable offering such as, oh, I don't know, some raw land you might have. Each step must be carefully crafted and integrated and then automated, my favorite word, in order to create a business that sustains you versus a service that drains you. I help you build all of that. Okay, let's do it, Wes. I love it. Yeah, that's awesome. Did, did you write that? Well, I can tell a really good copywriter did. Nah, that was fantastic. I'm, I'm going to have to go back and listen to this. And, and, and more importantly, some of that. you know, Wes has seven kids from the same wife, which is amazing. Amazing. Um, and, he's, you know, and, he like, and he's got a sense of humor. So, hey, uh, I'm on this podcast. So, I mean, there you go. <laughs> well, how do you think you get a sense of humor seven kids you know like what do we do right right all right I'm so what crazy what Schaefer? what makes you the sales whisperer uh i i sent eight hundred dollars to the government and filled out some forms and uh, they gave me a little r circle thingy after my name 10 years ago so there you go that's literally what made me the sales whisperer although that was probably eight years ago 10 years ago i bought the domain name september 1st 2006 I was watching the dog whisperer laptop on my lap and, was, and uh, I saw how he said that he, he trains the owners and he rehabilitates the dogs. And I was like, you know what? I do that with sales managers and salespeople. You know, most sales managers have never had training and most salespeople have had 
bad training, you know, so I, I have to, I got have to rehabilitate the beat down salespeople. Some of them have never had good sales training either. They've had product training. So I have to train them on that and, and the managers, you know, so it was, it, I literally just had that light bulb moment. I, I bought the domain name 10 days later, somebody emailed me asking if I would sell it. And uh, I was like, Hey, I just bought it. You know, I said, maybe I'll partner, but uh, I can't sell it. I just got it. And so I built it up from there. All right. So what, what is the typical salesperson's big challenges? Like they come to you and they're struggling. Why are they struggling? How are they improperly trained and how do you turn them around? Well, most salespeople, they, they don't understand what their number one job is. And their number one job is to prospect. Uh, and the number one component of prospecting is disqualifying. Uh, so they don't know what their number one job is and they don't know how to do it. They, they think their job is to qualify a prospect and it sounds like semantics, but it's not. I mean, very few people that you speak to right now today can, can reach into their wallet and hand you their credit card uh, unless it's, you know, a very low dollar kind of sale, but for any, anything of any significance that requires a salesperson to actually interact with the human being, um, it takes time. They have to consider it. Uh, maybe they have to talk with somebody, kick it over. Uh, so, so you're disqualifying. And, and so when you go in with that approach, when you understand that not everybody is ready, uh, then you, you won't come across as hungry or desperate, right? Because if, if you come across that way, you won't be able to give it away. You know, if they think that, that you need that sale, they, they can detect it. Just like the dog whisperer, right? I mean, they, you know, they say that dogs can sense fear, but I mean, human beings are a thousand percent better at detecting fear, uncertainty, doubt, you know, and they'll say it all the time. Like, nah, I just don't feel right. I'm going to go think it over. And what they're saying is you gave them, uh, you didn't give them enough confidence to finish the sale. And, you know, nine times out of 10, it's the salesperson's fault. They just, they went in the wrong way. And so that's, that's what I help people master. How to, how to straighten it out, how to understand their job, how to understand their activity. Uh, and how to have the right, right approach, you know, to disqualify versus qualify. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty important because, you know, like we, we deal with a lot of people who are not necessarily uh, trained in sales. I mean, not, I mean, you know, in what we do, Wes, you know, we, we help people with their land investing businesses and part of that is sales. And, you know, we, so we, we touch on a lot of people that don't have training with sales. And I think that one of the misconceptions that people have about sales is that every person that's calling you is ready to buy right then and there. And I think you right. made a point that, look, there's a lot of tire kickers out there in the world and it doesn't mean that they're bad. And to your point, you, you have to figure out, well, how do you qualify somebody? Are they, are they even qualified to buy? Because you might have to talk to a lot of the tire kickers, but that doesn't mean that they're, they're, that they're bad. You know, and you hear a lot of people say, salespeople say, you know, like, ah, oh, dang tire kickers. Well, it's the tire kickers that become tomorrow's customers. Mm -hmm. You foster those relationships correctly, but it doesn't, that relationship, if you spend all your time fostering the relationship, then you'll never sell and you'll go hungry, right? So you, yep. you kind of have to balance the two. We got to solve today's problem, which is I got to eat. And then you've got to also figure out like, how do I harvest this relationship into a future, future sale? Yep. Exactly. I equate it to the dating. I've got a whole presentation that I give. I show the sales pipeline and on the top is dating. And on the bottom is, you know, traditional prospect qualify, you know, demo, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and it's, it's, you know, you go to the bar and you make eye contact, you ask her to dance, you ask, can you buy her a drink? Hey, can I get your number? Would you like to meet for coffee? Would you like to go to dinner? You know, then dates one through 22, then go meet the family. And it's the exact same thing. You know, you, you're warming them up. You're making eye contact. Is there chemistry? Uh, and, you know, you, you may find the, the man or woman of your dreams, but if you come on too strong, you know, you're going to scare them away. And it's the same thing in selling. So, yeah, just because somebody said they want to dance or they'll meet you for a coffee doesn't mean they want to take you home and meet the family and get married. So, so you, 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 
I'm sorry. So you, you and I, you know, like you're, you're, uh, you're making me sweat a little bit because either we think alike or you see my posting domination video. <laughs> I do this. I do a very similar thing oh, yeah? on the marketing side because I see people that write ads and they want to write this ad and they want to spill everything about this particular property. You know, even down to the address, GPS coordinates, every minute detail of it. <laughs> And then they're like, well, wait a minute. No one's calling me. There's not calling you because you've given them everything they need to know. Right. So let's, let's, let's leave some mystique to it. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's be, you know, a little romantic. Let's not ask them to marry us on the first date. Let's, you know, let's, let's get their, let's get their digits, their Snapchat, whatever we want to do. <laughs> we tweet them. And then, then we'll ask them. Will you marry me? Which is the equivalent of buying this piece of property. If they say no, okay, can I have another first date? Which is I'll put you on my email list. Right. That's it. Great minds think alike, Mark. That's yeah, kind of scary. And, and Wes, I, I, you know, tell me if you disagree with this statement. The secret of making money online is the phone. The secret to making money online is the phone. I guess it depends on what you're selling. <laughs> um, I mean, the... All of the ads that we see online are all about how to make money in your pajamas while you sleep working 36 seconds a month. Uh, and so, but very few people uh, live in that world. So most people use the internet to either get a visitor uh, to their place of business or yes, to pick up the phone and call them. Uh, so the long answer is, yep, Mark might be right. That's kind of scary, isn't it? Is that scary, Scott? That no, Mark. Mark's often right. Okay. All right. So you and I are the crazy ones. All we right. are. So, so is it crazy that I agree with them? And I kind of do agree with them, I guess, in a roundabout in a, way. In a way. I mean, you know, like if you, if you, if you take what he's saying and, and, you know, like if you want to separate yourself from all of the other email noise that's out there, well, then pick up the phone and call somebody. They won't know what to do. Like, hey, this thing that you receive all these emails on, yeah. it actually does ring. And <laughs> 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 if you put it to your ear, you know, surprisingly. Yes, it, it can transmit voice. Uh, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it, it, direct mail cuts through the clutter. A voice phone call cuts through the clutter. But yeah, people are afraid of engaging. Um, and while the, the goal, you know, the ideal world is, yes, you got things cooking. Things are online. They're so strong, so powerful that people do literally just buy without ever speaking to you. And money just gets deposited. But that's that's so hard and so rare. Uh, and especially you know, in the real estate space, you're going to have to meet with somebody uh, to get that transaction to close. So yeah, pick up the phone. Okay. So now we pick up the phone and now what do we do Wes? Well, are we making an outbound call or are we make, or are we receiving an inbound call? Well, let's say we're using posting domination and we're just getting overwhelmed now with inbound calls. Hey, I'm interested in that 40 acre lot you have in, uh, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Now what well, do you do? Yeah, ideally you have you have them jump through a couple of hoops because if you are getting overwhelmed, then either the offer is too good, right, or maybe it's not discerning enough because you do you have a couple of goals in your marketing, right? One is to just to generate a ton of leads and hopefully you have some type of automation system to nurture those, or the other is you're trying to sell this one particular piece of property and you can waste time dealing with tire kickers and miss the, the real people with money. So, so it depends on, on how you handle it. Um, I, I caution people against picking up the phone every single time on the first ring because whoever's making the call is typically going to be in control of the conversation, at least in the beginning. And so, and if you're not ready you know, I'm running around, right? I got my headset on. I got, I'm walking out the door and the phone rings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're not ready. So that person, they're sitting still. They got all the info up there. They may have two or three or four different things they're looking at. Uh, and and they're, they're determining, they're making a judgment. Do I want to do business with this person, right? Does, does the way they conduct themselves over the phone match what I'm seeing online? And so they're, and they're subconsciously, a lot of times subconsciously trying to build that congruency, right? They're testing for that congruency. So you got to be careful. 
um, maybe you do need to answer the phone. Okay. And so uh, you got to do it right away or the lead will drop. I get it. So you answer the phone. Hey, I'm calling about that property in New Mexico. You know, I would say, fantastic. May I get your name and number, you know, or may, may I get your name? I'll buy it. I see the number. Is this your best line? Okay. Would you give me just, you know, give me 30 seconds. I need to wrap something up real quick. And I'd put them on hold, you know, and kind of, kind of warm myself up, right? Kind of just like uh, in sports, right? You know, athletes shooting the free throw, they got to stop. They can dribble, 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 you know, making a putt. They're going to have their routine. Get yourself in the mode. Maybe pull up the property because maybe you had several others. Get in the zone. But you're also making them kind of cool their jets, right? Just like on the date, right? You, they, hey, stay out here. I'll go slip into something more comfortable, right? Build up the anticipation, <laughs> Uh, so being fashionably late to the, to the dinner, right? So it's the same thing, but so you want to be able to make sure you got your ducks in a row and that you're now ready to engage that prospect. So that's how I would handle an inbound call. I, know I, I, I love this. Scott, go ahead. Yeah. What's, what's, what's phenomenal is, uh, like when, when you get that call, you're like, Hey, hold on, hold on a second. I got to finish wrapping up this sale. I'll be right back with you. Get yeah. But make sure and get their info before yeah, you do yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hey, but yeah. You, uh, what's your name and phone number in case I lose you, but hold on, I got to finish wrapping up the stuff. Just give me two minutes. Yep. And then, hey, how can I help you? Yeah, I'm calling about that property in Nevada. Oh man, I think that's the one that just sold. Wait, which one is it? Oh, <laughs> oh I, I have that one still available. I mean, look. <laughs> that's it. Uh, cause Always you know, selling, man. ABS. You want to, yeah, you got to be in control, right? Ultimately, all people are buying is confidence. That's what they're buying, you know? And so there's a bazillion pieces of property out there, right? There's a bazillion computers out there, a bazillion cars out there. So they're buying your confidence, you know, or are you helping them get that warm and fuzzy? about investing with you. Um, and, and regardless of what you're selling, you're selling a car, they're still investing their money in that car through you. So it's, you just gotta help them be confident that they're making the right decision in going with you. Wes, what do they say? What do you say when they say, hey, this sounds great. And you know, you've already qualified them. They're qualified. And you know you're exchanging value, right? We're gonna get a lot of value from it. And they say, hey, I got to talk to my spouse or, you know what, this sounds great. Let me, let me get back to you in five days. What do you say? Um, it, I like to structure the call so that I can eliminate objections from ever coming up rather than trying to overcome them. How okay. do you do that? Well, now in, in this case, it may be tough. Okay. Now if, if I were setting an appointment and I'm coming over to meet, Right. So I'm call, I call you, Mark, you know, say, hey, does this sound like a meeting you'd like to have? Yes, it does. Fantastic. You know, have your calendar in front of you. Yes, I do. You know, tomorrow at 10. Great. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, you know, in the interest of time and to make sure that we cover everything, would it be okay? Would it make sense if we set a quick agenda for our meeting tomorrow? And Mark's going to say, uh, yeah, uh, okay. I don't have a problem with an agenda. You know, I so, said, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm coming over to see, obviously, is there a chemistry, right? Is there a fit for us to do business? You know, I, I, have, I have two simple rules that we're open and honest with each other. And either of us can end the conversation at any time for any reason. Just if, if things just don't feel right, don't feel obligated to stick through it. And I won't either. Okay. But I'm gonna have a lot of questions for you about your investment background and history, what has worked, what hasn't worked, blah, blah, blah. You know, so along those lines, you know, do you have a partner, a spouse, a tax advisor, a tax attorney, anybody you bounce ideas off of when you make an investment like this? Okay, you're going to say one of two things. Either you're going to BS me. Oh, no, I make all the decisions. I wear the pants in this family. So if you tell me that, then when I show up and you tell me you want to think about it or run it by your spouse, then I can say, I'm kind of confused. You know, when we set the agenda, I asked you specifically, do you bounce anything off me by? And you said, you make the decision. You said, quote, I wear the pants in this relationship. So now that you want to go talk to somebody that tells me one of a couple of things, but ultimately,
I mean, it sounds like this just isn't a fit. Are you just trying to be nice to me? Like this just isn't a fit. And should we just say no? So, so I'll take it away. Now, if you say yes, you know what? As a matter of fact, I work with Scott. Scott and I are partners and we bounce everything off of him. You know, in fact, I'm the, I'm the crazy dreamer. He's the analytical. He holds me down. You know, he's the roots, you know, and I'm the, the big picture guy. I say, well, would it make sense that we have Scott in that meeting? Because here's what's going to happen. You're going to fall in love with what we talk about. You're going to take notes and then the telephone game's going to happen and things are going to get all mixed up. And Scott's going to say, you're crazy. You're a dreamer. We're not doing that deal, even though you love it and it's right. So what would it take to get Scott to be able to attend that meeting with us. Okay, so now I'm closing to get Scott to attend. And I won't go to that meeting until you confirm that Scott can make it. Otherwise, I'm wasting my time. Okay, now if we do this over the phone, that's a little different. You know, you call in off of an ad. I say, hey, give me 30 seconds. Let me wrap up this deal. I come back, how can I help? And you go, man, this deal sounds fantastic. Let me talk to my spouse. <laughs> You're a little bit, uh, cause I got to imagine these investments are not like, like a $5 deal, right? These are maybe some significant dollars they're investing with you. I mean, they are from a, a total value proposition, like maybe right. 19,000 relatively speaking for real estate, it's really low, but we make it irresistible like a car payment. Right. Okay. So it's not like West Schaefer money, but it's significant. Right. So if, um, you need to dig in early on. Uh, and cause I would want to know. So if it is car payment money, if it's $300, $500, $900 a month, if these are people, if this, if these people are experienced investors, like they're rolling over money or, or, uh, whatever, then they probably don't have to talk to that spouse or that significant other, you know, but I, I would think most people would, you know, my wife and I, we've been married over 21 years. I've, I've spent 19 grand on things. I've spent 30 grand on things without talking to her. Okay, but that's rare. You know, usually even a small deal, you know, if I want to go buy a new computer for thousand or fifteen hundred dollars, hey, you know, I'm gonna go get one just so you know, so you're not surprised you see it on the credit card. So, you know, it's a fair question for most people to bring up, but I, I would ask early on, you know, hey Mark, thanks for calling. It's a fantastic property. You know, let me ask you something. What attracts you to this property? Right? So I'm gonna ask that early on. We're gonna go through and say, I may ask the same thing. When, you know, when you're looking to make a decision like this, how do you make it? Do you have a team of advisors? Do you have a mastermind group? Do you have a spouse? Do you have an accountant? So before I go too long, I'm going to find that out, right? So again, if you say you make all the decisions, then you should be able to buy with me at the end of that call. If you say it's somebody else, then I have all your contact info. I may just cut that presentation off short you know, and, and push, Hey, can I get Scott on the phone? Can we do a three way call? Can you call him right now? You know, or if we get to the end, then, then you got to push, you know, say, Mark, are you just, are you just trying not to hurt my feelings? You know, say, look, I don't want to be that pesky salesman. Will you see my caller ID come up on your phone and you cringe? I don't want to be that guy, you know, but if you do just need a day or two or three, that's fine. You know, and you're going to meet with who? Oh, you're going to meet with Scott. Oh, you're going to meet with your spouse. Okay. Let me ask you something. What are you going to tell Scott? What are you going to tell him after our conversation? So I'm going to make you, if, if you're serious, you're going, to, you're going to give it back to me. You took some notes and you probably missed some things, right? You say, no, hey, what about this? Are you going to tell him about that feature? Are you going to tell them about the the, the higher rate of return? Are you going to tell them about the tax benefits? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You know, say, Mark, you know what? This thing is in demand and there's only one of these. Yes, there's other properties, but this is the only one. And you know what? You hear my phone ringing in the background. You know, do you really want to take five days? Is this a decision that you really need some help from somebody else to make? Uh, or are you just getting kind of cold feet? So I'm going to bring it back around without being pushy, right? I'm asking honest questions and, and that'll usually turn things around. If it is an investment like that, that they can afford monthly, they should be able to close. Scott Todd, this is just brilliant. This is like brilliant training. We should, we should actually transcribe this, but my question to you, Scott, because you don't come from a sales background, right? Well, you don't have a, you don't have a no formal idea. training background, right? Well, I, I did. I did do selling for a while. Okay. So. 
Okay, but so not, not formal. I didn't like. I can't call myself the sales whisperer. Right, right. Okay, so neither one of us you was can sales. because I, I trademarked it. But I, I know what you're saying. Right. <laughs> right, so, so, uh, you know, neither one of us come across as, and you can't see, you know, Wes's face, but he's a good-looking guy. You know, Scott and I are like these kind of, you know, geeky guys, right? Not as much confidence emanating from Scott and I, if you're on the phone with us, as say a Wes, right? Which is why he's a sales whisperer. That being said, right? How important, Wes, is it for a beginner in any kind of sales situation to have a script of those questions to stay on task and not sound like a robot? Ah, you do need a script. And here's, okay, here's where everybody pushes back on. And I pushed back on this as a salesman early on because I had bad training, because I was a victim of the, of the dog whisperer realm, right, where people had bad training or no training. And, and I would ask, you know, how much money does Tom Hanks or Tom Cruise make right now? Either of you have an idea? $20 million a film? $25 yeah. million a film? Yeah, something like that. Who knows what? Multi-million. I mean, they make eight figures a film, right? And what do they do for a living? They memorize a script. They memorize a script. They memorize it. They internalize They do more than memorize it, right? They internalize it. They make it their own. And then they make you believe it, right? And so, and then on the other hand, like how much money does, you know, I know all the old people, right? Letterman and Leno, and they don't do anything anymore, right? But uh, Jimmy Kimmel, right? I mean, Ellen, um, what do they do for a living? They ask questions. They ask questions prepared in advance, right? So I'm asking you to kind of blend the world of Jimmy Kimmel and Tom Cruise, right? Internalize the script, but make it be very question-based, uh, and then make it your own. Uh, but people are very uh, predictable, right? You know, if I say, you know, Mark, that's a really cool headset you have on. Where did you get it, right? You instantly, like, you like me a little bit more because I have good taste in the stuff that you've purchased, okay? Then conversely, I look at Scott and I go, Scott, those glasses are ridiculous. Where'd you get those frames, man? Where Did your other ones get run over by a car? You know, did your dog eat your main glasses? You know, Scott's going to go, this guy's kind of a jerk. You know, I mean, so we're very predictable. And so we're also predictable in, hey, Scott, you want to buy this thing right now or what? You know, hey, Mark, I mean, an idiot can see that this is an easy deal, right? This is a no-brainer, man. I mean, like, you got to be just stupid if you don't sign right now oh i mean you're you're gonna just you're pushing them back i mean if you're pushing the buttons that's driving them away you know so if you can turn it around and say you know scott thanks for calling you know what what's the number one thing that attracted you to this property you know and then i'm asking him questions and whether he's he's a rookie investor or an experienced investor i'm gonna find something some way to give him a sincere compliment and so the compliment is going to be different each time, you know, because maybe I'm like, hey, dude, those are cool glasses. Where'd you get those? I, I need mine too. Matter of fact, I don't have mine on. I need to get them, you know, but pay a sincere compliment. And then, so the compliment is not scripted, but the idea of listening to someone and paying them a compliment is scripted, you know? And so you absolutely have to, you know, you're either working your plan or, or you're going to be part of their plan. You know, it's just, that's life in the big city. That's any human interaction, right? You go to a restaurant, what do they hand you? You know, they hand you a restaurant script, otherwise known as a menu, you know, because it sets the tone. Uh, yes, you can order off the menu. Yes, you can substitute fruit instead of fries, but it's a dollar extra. Or you can haggle and say, Scott, you're not really going to charge me extra. Can, can, we, can, can I get, I want like the wedge. I want the curly fries and I don't want to pay extra. Can you make that happen? Yeah, you're a nice guy. You complimented me on my glasses. So yes, I'm going to get that for you. Or you'll say, you know, he'll think deep down, no, you're a jerk. You, you ridiculed my glasses. And so not only will they, I charge you more, I'll make sure a few fall off as I carry them. So you're going to get less fries and pay more for it. You know, so the, the restaurant gives you a script in that menu. 
so they can control the environment, so they can control the cost, they can control the time to get the food out because the quicker you can get in and get out, they can put somebody else there and make more money. So scripts are a must in life. I, Scott Todd, what, what, are you, what are you thinking right now? I'm, I'm thinking I love the, the sales whisperer. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm thinking I, I love the sales whisperer too. And I'll tell you, I, you know, before the podcast, I was a little jerky to Wes about, about a piece of software. Now I'm, I'm, I'm feeling kind of guilty about it. <laughs> hey, I, I didn't see, make software. I see man. why he has seven home. kids, man. I see why he has seven kids. Everybody loves this guy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so my question to you, Wes, is uh, on a personal level, does anyone say no to you? Sure. You bet. I, uh, you know, you're never going to bet a thousand. Uh, and I'm a work in progress as well, right? I mean, there's still some of the analytical types maybe, or, you know, maybe they're just not in a good mood and I'm not in a good mood. So we kind of snipe at each other and we lose it. So yeah, you're not going to win everything. Uh, so you got to make sure you're all, you got to stack the odds in your favor. Right. And so maybe on some days when I am tired, right, maybe I didn't get enough sleep. Maybe I'm traveling or whatever. Maybe I shouldn't answer the phone that day. You know, give, give yourself a chance. Go take a 30 minute power nap. Go take a two hour nap. Just shut down and go watch a movie, you know, because I think sometimes we do push too hard um, and, and you, you reach that point of diminishing return, you know. And so, um, so yeah, you're always going to lose sales. Uh, obviously, the goal is to win more than you lose. The goal really is to win them all. Uh, I actually have a program called Make Every Sale. Uh, so, and, and that's the goal. Yeah. Uh, but the other goal, the other part of that Make Every Sale, you know, part of it is literally bad a thousand, but that's impossible. The other part is understand, kind of like Scott's talking about with the dating scenario, there's, there's five or 10 or 15 little sales all along the way right? The, the ad is a sale. The headline is a sale. The first sentence is a sale. Getting the read to the end is a sale. Getting them to call or click and visit the landing page is a sale. Getting them to opt in is a sale, right? So, you got to understand that, that you have to make every sale, every step along the way to bring it to a conclusion. So, yeah, you, you, you'll, nobody bats a thousand. All right. Fantastic. Well, we're at that point now, Wes. We're going to put you on the spot. Uh oh. We're going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. You've already given us tons of tips to increase our, to increase our sales, but I'm just going to push you for one more. So what would you like? A website or a book or what? All the above? What do you, tell me, tell me. I mean, whatever you think is going to provide the most value. Um, I mean, I think it's really just rehashing kind of what we talked about is understanding that everybody is in sales. Okay. And you're either part of some, you're either working your own plan or you're being worked by someone else's plan. Uh, and so if you are in sales and that's why you're listening to this, uh, then understand you don't have to be hyper. You don't have to be happy. <laughs> Um, and the whole no like and trust thing when it comes to sales, knowing and liking is way overrated. People have to trust you though, no matter what, even if they don't like you, even if they barely know you, they'll give you their money if they trust you. Okay. So focus on that. And, and the way you do that, I see too many people, small businesses trying to build a brand. We're not good year right? We're not the Snoopy MetLife blimp. Uh, we can't build a branding campaign and wait 5, 10, 15 years for somebody to recognize this. So, you, you build a brand through consistency by over-delivering, okay? So, so strive to serve, to over-deliver, uh, and you will build a reputation as a trustworthy individual and the sales will truly come to you at that point, but that will take a little while. So, uh, embrace the sale because like you said in the beginning, nothing happens until a sale is made. I love it. I love it. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Oh, man. Okay, Mark. What, what if, what if Evernote, I mean, like I use Evernote for my VAs, you know, like, you know, to keep my, um, you know, processes and stuff, organized notes. And I give my VAs access to it. But let me ask you a question. What if, Evernote 
and uh, Pinterest came together. Could you imagine that for like VAs? You could put, you know, pictures there and it's, it's laid out in a nice, easy way to find stuff, you know, like processes or, you know, maybe training videos, training steps, action steps. And I found it. It's called score S K O R E dot I O score. I, I've heard of score.io. Why do I know this? Yeah. It's like, to check it's that like out. Chris and Evernote had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> One single destination for teams, excuse me, for your team's knowledge. So, so I created an account and uh, I started, I started putting in, um, you know, stuff that, that deals with kind of accounting processes, you know, how, how we account for things and, then I needed to, uh, to educate a VA on, on um, how to do something. So I created a video, but where do you store that video? It's just a link somewhere here. All of the knowledge comes into one spot and you know what you can start off for free, but you can also go and it's very expensive. It's like $2 a month per user. I mean, how expensive wow. is this? This is nuts. I, you know what? You've, you've lost me on this by the way. And I'll tell you why. Why? Because they're too low. And I've seen time and time again, <laughs> these startups that don't have a good monetization policy and have tons of value. Hey, at least there is some. Dropbox was free in the beginning, right? Even the Evernote Dropbox was free in the beginning. See, funding them and their huge burn rate. Why? I want to see these guys and I want to see how much money they have in VC money before I give them my two bucks. No, no, no. I, I think you're thinking of it the wrong way. All so, right. so. <laughs> Another website that I love is Trello, right? Trello is free forever, free forever, unlimited. And then they do have, they do have a way of monetizing it. But the reason that they do it is because they use Trello for their own business operation. Okay. So, right. you know, I'm not saying that that's what this company is doing, but I mean, you think about it two $2 per user, you know, you have five users on there. It's 10 bucks a month. It's not that expensive to manage this thing. You know, they don't need to, it's a big scam, man, because what, what will happen is they'll get us all using it and then they'll go to $5 a month, which is still worth every penny if it, if it <laughs> adds value to your team. I'd rather them start off at 20 bucks a month. <laughs> well, then they might, keep, they, might, they might keep people away. No, no, I know. I, I get it. I get it. But I just hope that they have enough. Check time. it out. Check it out before you judge. All right. I won't judge. Yeah. My, yeah my tip of the week is going to be, supercharge your sales and learn more at saleswhisperer.com. Is that the best site to go to us? Man, I, I'm, I think I'm starting to like you a lot more. See, we start, we start off Rocky. <laughs> now, now Wes is, has a full 180. He's fully embracing the wisdom of the land geek. So, <laughs> supercharge your sales there's so much information on Wes's site that, um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely all in because, uh, you know, we, I mean, we, we've had a few different types of sales trainers on here, Scott. Um, Tom Hopkins, right. we had uh, the science of selling, uh, David Hofeld. We had Bob Berg. We had uh, Grant Cardone, right? But I think of all of them, I think Wes was able to articulate from a, from a very high level, even down to the minutia, the best way to get the most sales. Right. With that, I am high. I, I really appreciate it, Wes. And, and so do the listeners. So thank you. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you. Um, Scott, Todd, are we good? Mark, we're, we're great, man. Wes, are we good? We're good. Did we forget to ask you anything that we should have asked you? No, I think we're good. All right. Well, we covered to, all the bases. All right. I want to thank Wes Schaefer from the sales .com for taking time out of his valuable day to share his wisdom. And uh, I want to thank Scott Todd from Scott Todd.net and moto.com and posting domination.com forward slash the land geek. Today's podcast is sponsored by lone geek.io. Get paid, get automated, save time, make money. Lone geek. Dot io and learn more about me at thelandgeek.com all right we're gonna get it we're gonna get really geeky wes is gonna be really embarrassed you ready uh -oh. ready mark one two three let, let freedom ring. ring oh he's he's <laughs> he gave that look like really oh, no. oh my gosh
All right. Subscribe, rate, review the podcast. <laughs> Come on, listeners. <laughs> See everybody next time. <laughs>